G'day you good things, welcome to another video. Today we're painting Maximus, a character from Corvus Belli's ever so excellent board game, Aristea. Grab a brush, get keen, let's get into it. I've already undercoated him with a black spray and then done a value sketch with white ink through the airbrush. It's pretty self-explanatory, but if you're not sure what's going on, there's a bunch of great videos on Zenful highlighting on the old YouTube. He's mostly going to be blue, so we'll start with the blue armor. These are the paints that I used. Now I don't want to spend forever on him, so we're going straight to the airbrush. Starting with the dark blue, I spray him from underneath, basically to tint all the shadows blue and set our base color. Moving on to our mid-tone, I raise the angle so I'm getting him from about 90 degrees, making sure to leave some of the dark blue in the shadows and obviously leaving space on my value sketch for the lighter blues coming up. With those lightest tones, I very gently dust him from above, being super careful not to overdo it here, because this will also desaturate it quite a bit. I also decided to try and get a little fancy and place some soft highlights on individual armor plates, which kind of works, but I probably need an airbrush with a finer needle to do that sort of stuff properly. He's already looking pretty cool and oh so very blue, but I have a really rich blue ink that just makes the blue more blue -ra -ra -ra, particularly in the shadows. So I get that out and reinforce my color a bit with it, just in the deepest sort of recesses that I can reach. This is about as far as I'll get with the airbrush, so I make the 1.5 meter arduous trek all the way over to the painting desk and get out the brush. First order of business here is to finish off all the blue armor. So using the light blue color, I thin it right down and start placing highlights to make the blue nice and bright and start look a little shiny. I also catch the upper edges with this color for some nice little edge highlights, but I'm concentrating them mostly towards the top and front of the mini. I do want him to look nice, but I'm really not worried about the bits I'm never gonna see. For the final highlights on the blue armor, I mix my light blue tone with a little white and then very sparingly go over just the sharpest and highest points with this. That's the armor done. Moving on to the undersuit and shield brace, I want it to be a dark sort of metallic tone, like chainmail or something. So the first step here is going over it all with Vallejo German Grey, mixed in with a little bit of blue that was on the palette already. After that, I just take a regular old neutral gray and start highlighting it. If it's a gaming model like this one is, you can kind of cheat it a little and instead of highlighting every single tiny link, save a bunch of time and treat them as strands or, or larger volumes, especially just for this mid-tone part. The penultimate highlights on these areas are with pale blue gray, and you do have to start treating each shape individually now, unfortunately. Then I pick out the highest points with a teensy touch of white and we're done with these bits. The big old Max writing on his shield is just the pale blue gray shaded with a little blue ink and then edge highlighted with white. Simple and it looks possible to me. For this handsome lad's face, my go-to skin tones are literally just the first ever skin tone paints I bought many, many moons ago. Bugman's Glow, Cadian Flesh, and Kislev Flesh from the Citadel range. I base coat the face with Bugman's Glow and then highlight up with each successive color. Not a huge amount to discuss here, except that painting faces on camera is a super difficult. Make sure you leave your darkest color in the recesses of the model for that extra juicy contrast and expressiveness. Maximus's hair is a desaturated brown, which I really like for hair. I highlight this up just by adding a teensy touch of Vallejo Ice Yellow and then some off-white to that as well. When I'm done with the hair here, I decided that it's a little too desaturated, so I put a little vibrancy in via some brown ink. Then, of course, it's the time when suddenly my hands seem way shakier than usual, and that's because we gotta paint the eyes. For a quick and simple way to do eyes, I start with a slightly off-white and then a tiny dot of black for the irises slash pupils and then go back in with a flesh tone to properly shape the eyes so your mini doesn't look like a raving lunatic. After the face is done, we're pretty close. It's just some freehand details and glowy bits left to go.
The stripes on his armor being orange presents a little problem because if we just tried to put acrylic orange straight over blue, we'd need about 7 million coats of paint and even then it wouldn't look right. Sneaky trick for doing orange or yellow or something over a darker color? Paint it white first. Or in this case, an almost white blue gray. So I go in first with this lighter color, block in the freehand shapes I want to do, and then add a bunch of white to the gray and uh, highlight the stripes like we discussed. This is sort of like a sneaky little value sketch for your freehand. After that, time for the orange. I'm using Chimera Colors Orange because it was right in front of me, but also because they're phenomenal paints and there's a reason they're always right in front of me. And see, I wasn't lying. The orange goes on super easy and is vibrant as right from the get go. Oh, by the way, you definitely want to go slow on all this freehand business. It ain't a race and there's no prizes for finishing first, except maybe some errant brush strokes ruining all your good work. I highlight the orange with Fire Dragon Bright from Citadel just on the upwards facing surfaces here and there and do a little final edge highlight of the same color mixed with Vallejo Ice Yellow. The final steps, glowy bits. Maximus has got a few little lights in his pretty blue armor so we're going to make them little red glowy bits. First, paint each part with pure white. Then, thin down some crimson ink and go over it with the crimson ink. Then I mix the ink with a little tiny bit of white and paint the central area. Try not to make it too pink, but just giving a bit of a high value in the middle there. And then the final touch here is going back in with pure white, making the middle of the lights nice and bright. And just for good measure, I glaze it over again with a crimson ink. You can go back and forth on this like for as long as you want, but once is enough for me. And just like that, you've got yourself a Maximus, all shiny and ready to crush his foes in the hexaderm. Hey, if you've got any questions, comments, criticisms, chuck them down below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want. And that's all we're gonna for the video.